Welcome everyone to the Nosh podcast. This podcast is sponsored by Beanboard Chino Walter. So welcome once more. Uh, we are here on the third episode of this podcast. For you uh, that are watching us for the first time, uh, our podcast Nosh, the word Nosh, we derivate it from Portuguese. That means we. Uh, as Africans, we are Ubuntu. So together we are, together we stand. So wha- <coughs> follow us, subscribe in our channel, put your like and lift it up to also your comment because we want to hear from you what you think about of every subject that we speak on this podcast. So <laughs> uh, today we are going to talk about a very wonderful subject, interesting, and I believe that it will share values for your life. We are going to talk about mental health. And <laughs> I have two special guests that I believe that they will share knowledge. They will share uh, wise words that it can help you to have a, a good mental life. So I will start by introducing ourselves. Uh, first, the ladies, of course. Let me start by, <laughs> by you. <laughs> Yeah, just look at the camera and introduce yourself. Um, So I'm Philia, and uh, I, what what do I say? (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Yes, so So right now I am working as a missionary in Brazil. But before that, I worked in digital marketing and also at Amazon. Uh, I did my MSc psychology in Andhra University and also my MBA from Geetham. And yes, I'm from Vizag, grew up here my whole life. So yeah. yes. <laughs> For those who doesn't know, <laughs> Vizag is, uh, is located in Andhra Pradesh, south side of India. Okay, and you? Uh, I'm Debo Precious Lamini. Please, Ch- please. Say <laughs> the, the, the first name. <laughs> I'm Debo. What, what? Again, please. <laughs> he can't pronounce my name. <laughs> yeah. I'm Debo Precious Lamini. Yeah. Debo means treasure. Yes. Treasure. Yes. I am a student at Andhra University. Um, I'm doing MA social work, and I've had the pleasure to work at the government hospital for mental care last semester. So I'm quite conversant with the topics about mental health, and I'm really happy to be here. Yeah. Yeah, so guys, as you're aware, heard from them. Uh, there is no better play, uh, better person than you guys to speak about this this subject. I believe that in every part of the world, youth, kids, and elders, they are always worried about the mental health. Nowadays, we see many guys worried about of what to eat, <laughs> how to maintain their body to, to become fit, but also even the companies, they are spending so much time studying uh, the, uh, the organizational behavior, and also they are worried about the he- mental, uh, the health of the employees. So let's start by definition. So what is really a mental health? What's coming in your mind when you h- hear this word? When I think of mental health, I think the first thing that... a little bit louder? Yes, sorry. So when I think of mental health, what usually comes to my mind is our emotional well-being like as an individual we are body mind and soul and that's what we believe right yeah so uh mental health is the part that's related to our mind our emotions our will our desires so this is what i believe and how to keep them healthy um so that you know you can make the best of this life so this is what i think is mental health (laughs) and you precious uh i believe that uh mental health is like the state of complete totality of a human being in the form of physiology, physical aspects, cognitive aspects, emotional aspects, like the totality of human welfare that makes you as a person, how you think and how you feel when you can balance all of those aspects, right? That is mental health according to me. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Believe that it will become more interesting. Why we will I will screw you guys on according to your definition. But uh, tell me something. Uh, 
it's common to, to hear that when you see someone who is too skinny and who is too fat and uh, have some uh, unbalanced body, we already define them as an uh, unhealthy person. So is it is also possible to uh, identify someone who is unhealthy mentally? How to identify it? Can we? No, it is not possible to mm-hmm. identify. It is not. How, it, is how? Not po- it is not possible because it is like, okay, I'd like to think that as a person, mm-hmm. we, we assume we have a lot of assumptions. Yes. You know, I can see you as skinny and assume that you are not healthy, like you don't eat right yet. It's just how you're structured. Genetic. You know, mm-hmm. it's genetic. Yep. Just like mental health, someone would appear to be very happy. She would appear to be very happy right now, but she's going through a lot of things. So it, I really think it's not possible to it's identify. Not possible it's to not identify. possible to. You can just only identify symptoms. Sometimes. That will lead you to asking questions and then, you know, then that's when you can diagnose or that's when you can identify that this person is not okay mentally. Yes. What about you? Uh, I believe, like she said, that it is possible to notice there are a few signs and symptoms that people show. Uh, for example, like depression. They yes. tend to spend more time alone. They tend to, uh, you know somehow just get away from society but not everybody who does that is also depressed so there are some few signs and symptoms that we do need to learn about and look out for but you cannot say for 100 percent you know you can't be sure that this person is going through something but we can always try to be aware and try to be you know available to help if anybody ever needs it okay there are some studies that says uh <clears throat> Is it possible to identify when someone is not mentally healthy uh, according to their behaviors? I don't know if I'm wrong. You guys will correct me, but most of those persons who suffer by anxiety or depression, it reflects on their body. It reflects on even when they are standing. Um, There is some saying that people who suffer by uh, anxiety, they eat, they... (laughs) Yeah, so <laughs> this is what we see in common day. So you guys don't agree with it? Because they use this as sustain of the argument that is, it is possible to identify that this person is not mentally good. Okay, right now I feel attacked because I sometimes do this. So I like feel attacked. <laughs> then they now attacking me for <laughs> eating my nails. Yeah. Okay, um, what would I say? Um, you know, this with this thing of mental health, mm-hmm. these behaviors that are associated with it, they are common. It's mm-hmm. not really that it is the behavior that is like expected of, of a person who, is, who has mental illness, but it is common, common amongst all the persons. You know, research, we mm-hmm. do studies and we collect data. So the most reliable data that people have, you know, that aligns with, let's say you are researching about mental illness and we found out that most of the people with mental illnesses yes. are biting their nails, mm-hmm. then that will be the results and the conclusions that we make, you know. But it's not really necessarily that those people do that, all of them. Some people do something else, you know. Okay. They can bite this just this spoon yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's uncommon it's uncommon it's uncommon you defend that it's uncommon <laughs> okay yes. tell me um, so i think <clears throat> all there is research for a reason there are you know people who who've done research and who have listed okay these are the signs these are the symptoms but like i said they can only be you know signposts or something just that can just probably just give you a feel of it but not you know fully so you can i think only the only person who can completely diagnose is a proper you know psychologist or a psychiatrist because there is we have the internet 
and there is so much, so many things that are there on the internet about signs, symptoms. You just Google, there is like hundreds, hundreds. right? Yeah. So we cannot always be 100% sure, but there is research for a reason. So we yeah. can take that as a basis, but that should not be our conclusion. Oh, sure, <laughs> let's keep on. And then we'll see <laughs> if it's not conclusion or not. So uh, another question is, uh, people are more depressed, people are, more, are suffering more with anxiety on nowadays. Uh, I believe that nowadays we have more research or we have more data and tools to identify that people are more in our generation. Because I believe in the past they were also. But uh, we can identify now easily uh, that many young guys are facing uh, mental health issues that elders only faced when we were kids. So for you guys, what is the reason behind it? Mm, can you repeat? Sorry, I, I just lost okay. you for a moment. Yes. My question is, uh, in our days, we will see that according to the data, the numbers of youth suffering with anxiety and depression is high. Blood pressures. Those are uh, things that in the past we used to see more in the elders not in the young guys, you know? So, but for now we can see it. So my question is, what is the reason behind it? Um, I cannot say there's an absolute reason behind it, mm -hmm. but as times are changing, you know, oh. as, you know, things, people are developing, people are enlightened. We cannot really say that in the past they didn't happen to youngsters. Yep. It's just that it wasn't common Maybe it wasn't documented as well. It wasn't... People weren't aware of such things uh, in younger people, you know. It is mostly known that older people are the ones affected by things. Children are just... They don't have feelings, you know. We just mise everything. So it was common a long time ago. Yet now, those things are manifesting, you mm -hmm. know. As we try to bring things down we like bury things we bury things under the carpet we've buried children's feelings before mm -hmm. uh, and they did nothing but now they are manifesting you know there is more rebellion over those things you know because of a lot of exposure a lot of awarenesses you know a lot of influences culture is changing society is changing education is also changing so that, that, I would say, is the reason why. So, bless you. Uh, bless you. Uh, Philip, you don't think that um, the people in the past, they were more stronger than us? They used to face more than us? Um, to be honest, I do believe that people in the past also had all these issues, mm -hmm. but not as much as it is today. Because I believe today, like the society is changing, right? There yeah. are things that are changing. And to be honest, I think social media plays a very, very big part. Like social media cultivates a culture of comparison. Ah, of so once, be once we compare, once we start to compare, that's when we realize, okay, I don't have this. I don't, we notice the lacking. Okay. But in reality, there isn't any lacking, but that is a, something that's felt because we compare things to other people. So I believe that because of this culture of comparison, mm -hmm. there is more anxiety, more depression. Um, and I feel like, yeah, the more society is getting connected, the more, uh, you know. Talking about comparison, you yes. don't think that it's more on the woman's side than on the men's side? No, I believe, I think, you, huh? you can't say it. Definitely, Definitely not. not. No. <laughs> okay, we will continue on it. <laughs> so, guys, uh, this podcast is sponsored by Binboard Chino Walter. If you are here in India, Andhra Pradesh, Vishakapatna, this is the right place to have a coffee, milkshake, and everything that you can see here. Aren't you guys enjoying it? Of course. No, I, 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 I need to see you guys testing it now. You didn't touch your cake. So guys, this is the best place to have your cake. 
have a good environment if you want to work and have some coffee this is the place if you want to read the book and study this is the place if you have a girlfriend and you want to have some quality time this is the right place and if you are a girl you are a single if you are looking for a boyfriend in my team not podcast there are many single guys <laughs> but you will find them here here in the beanboard channel Walter. so this podcast is sponsored by beanboard channel Walter. Go back to the subject. You talk about comparison. I want to understand that if uh, there are more women or men suffering mental health issues. I think you can't really segregate saying <laughs> women <laughs> and men. That's uh, what I believe. Nah, nah. nah. Yes. I have to agree with you on mm -hmm. that. Who agree with me what? I have to agree with her. Yeah. And nah. I have my reasons. What? Yes. Yeah, I want to hear your, your reason, please. Sustain okay. it. Yeah, for the yeah. longest time. <laughs> okay, for the longest time, mm -hmm. I've known that it has to be men who suffer more mental health problems than mm -hmm. women, especially when I was, like, back home. That's yeah. what I knew because, like, statistics, that's what they tell because mm -hmm. you guys um, usually don't have much expression towards this, you know. Definitely. But me coming to India, my experiences and my research and proof, evidence, you know, I've been at the government hospital for mental care. I noticed that it's actually women who are suffering more than men, you know. So that actually changed the whole perspective okay. of me saying, you know, this gender suffers more, this gender. I just think all genders are suffering, but they all have their um, ways of mm -hmm. suffering. It's like it is not the same. Yeah, it's not the same truth, but it's just peculiar to each gender. We all have, like, differences in no, of course how not. much we Men suffer. Men were made for it. Men can face more. How? Yeah. How? how? Because we are a man. Yeah, that's not a so, reason. <laughs> but we will not get to the subject because if you want to keep on this conversation, we are waiting for you here on the Nosh podcast. They are saying that women they can face more on it, but I believe that men can face it. But I will not defend myself. I will let you guys comment on this podcast, comment on this video, share the link, and if you want to, to disagree with, just write in the comments. So she talk about. Uh, Indian community. Uh, we have uh, an African girl and Indian girl here. Uh, you are a better pr person to put everything in the balance. Uh, Philia have been abroad, have been to Australia and Brazil. I believe that's also you have enough argument to compare mm -hmm. India and other countries. I'm talking about the youth class. Uh, do you think that there are more mental issues here in India or abroad? Um, okay, I believe that there are mental issues anywhere, everywhere, yeah, uh, everywhere in the world, mm -hmm. but because India is, or many of the Eastern countries are yeah. very, uh, they're based on a shame-based culture, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So because of that, not many people are willing to open up about these issues because we see ourselves, especially in the Eastern world, we see ourselves as a community. There's really less individuality and more of you know a collective community right. so if you admit that okay i'm feeling weak that actually reflects like reflects. say on your family okay. on your oh what must you know people yeah. start talking oh what must be wrong with their family mm -hmm. you know nobody says about the individual. the individual so i feel like in india because of that culture it doesn't really come up although yeah. times are changing definitely i believe times are changing yeah. but in the in the western culture there's they're more of an individualistic society like okay. it's, you know, once you leave the family, it's you and yourself. You do things for yourself. Yeah, okay. So I believe because of that, they are more open and, you know, they seek uh, more help earlier than I think our cultures. Okay. What about you, Ebo? <laughs> Precious. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, comparing to, you have been also to many African countries. Yeah. yeah. Comparing to all your experience in Africa and here in India. Where did you find more people facing these mental issues? Uh, compared to India, we're yeah. comparing now. Uh, I'd like to think that, okay, when I came here, as much as really I don't understand 
uh, the cultural differences and the social differences. Yeah. But I did notice that uh, I think a lot of people here are like, yeah, they have this thing. Like they are, like I don't really to make like make it big. Like they are suffering mentally because maybe I'd, some of the people really don't know that it's yeah. like has an impact and effect on them that we can see that this is not a normal person. Okay. You know, I've been in class and I noticed that some people, maybe let's say I talk to someone, they are scared to express themselves. To me, it's like something is going on. I'm like, I get worried. What is going on? You know, yeah. I like speak to maybe one of my male colleagues mm -hmm. and the females like love. They're not free to express themselves. When we touch on some topics, they're not free. When we're approaching a lecturer, they're scared. You know, all those kind of behaviors, to me, it's like, what is going on? It does, like, point out to some form of, like, bondage. It's like there's just something that is missing, you know, about people. Yeah, even older people, really, older people. If you, like, see a lecturer, maybe someone big passes, they are, like, they look scared in the form. I don't really understand what it is. Maybe it's a form of respect, you know, because us, we show respect differently. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, fine, we respect this person, but why should you be like that? Because as an older people, person, sorry, I also look up to you, but now when you look like you're afraid as well, I'm like questioning, why, why are you like that at your big age, you know? Yeah. So there's like something like that. There's like a lot of questions regarding the mental state of, people here yeah, compared to back home because they we know that when i'm suffering i know that this person is suffering mostly as much as some things you can't like um express yes and you can't like notice but i know that this person is suffering and they will have some ways to express you know some people will be addicts some people will be they're expressing their feelings they're expressing their states where they are in you know it's it's easy for me to identify them that oh this person might be suffering yeah it's quite difficult you know it's quite <laughs> sketchy yeah it's quite sketchy yeah talking about the this thing uh, on the student level class mm -hmm. and as a international citizen also mm -hmm. we could also face the same uh, challenge so mm -hmm. my question is is uh, someone will react aggressively stressed with a simple reason is having a, a mental issues unhealthy is a, a, how unhealthy mentally because we everyone takes hot or here mm -hmm. rapid or yogurt mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and sometimes uh, the driver start uh, shouting without any reason mm -hmm. and then you need to calm him down yeah and then say and then ask after why you are shouting what is the problem because yeah. even though you try to understand the problem and we also have I, I, I have received some message from students from many other universities saying that there are some times that teachers they just come and hate you without no reason shout at you without yeah. no reason hate you it is like they act aggressively mm -hmm. to you without no reason mm -hmm. and sometimes they disrespect you yeah so is everything linked to unhealthy mentally i think i'd like to think it is linked to mental health yes unhealthy mm. unhealthy uh behaviors unhealthy tendencies you know mm -hmm. you tend to redirect your feelings towards anger okay. you know and you it's easy to take on take mm -hmm out anger on another person yeah you know if you have it within yourself mm -hmm. you know you can't take it out on yourself of course because that would that wouldn't be enough you won't be satisfied but the moment i come to jerry and i shout at jerry i'll be happy about myself because that is exactly what i'm seeking you know i want to feel better so the moment i shout at you you feel bad i feel happy that you're now bad you feel bad about yourself so a lot of people usually they don't learn ways on how to 
uh, channel their anger, you know. As much as anger is there, it's a human emotion. That's why we feel emotionally. But mental health says we should be able to balance it in a way that it, 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 it doesn't make us um, bad people. Like right now, we are like, some people, they disrespect you. So those are all qualities of someone who really, really feel that they don't like those people are bad. Those people are, yeah. So yeah. mental health says we should just balance. balance. You know, we should have a balance. I know that this, I'm triggered by this certain thing. Let me just do something, you know. We're not taught those kind of things as individuals. Not in India alone, also in Africa. Africa. We do have angry people, you know. Yeah. We know that especially, let me make an example of guys. I come to you, Jerry, and I say hi. Maybe that day you're just not fine. You just hit me with the fist. You're angry. It's a behavior. Yeah, I'm the most romantic guy in the world. <laughs> She's just giving an example. An example, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they do that, you know, those kind of things. And you start questioning yourself. You have to question, why? What did I? Why, what did I do? And all of those things. So I really feel like it has to do with uh, awareness, awareness, education. We yeah, are yes. not aware of what yes. mental health is, mm -hmm. what emotions oh. are. Like yes. right now, I could just ask you an example. Just name. Maybe four emotions that you know. Jesus <laughs> yeah, Christ. Exactly. No, exactly. No, you me. no, that's exactly we are not aware of what emotions we yes. are facing with as people, so we wouldn't yeah, know. Yes. Mm hmm. Okay. Anger. We just talked about anger. Anger. Yeah. Anger. Yeah. Okay. So. Without us knowing that yeah. love is an emotion, mm -hmm. you know, we won't know how to deal with it whenever we, it starts to frustrate us now, you know, we just know that so love should be good. Prepared, yeah, to deal yeah. with the emotion. Yes, we just know that love should be just good, it should be, whenever things get tight, we're so like, no, that's not love. Oh. We're done. Yes. Yeah. What do you think about it? Yes, yeah, so one thing I would like to point out about anger is that anger is always is an emotion that always points to something deeper. It's it's a used yeah, it's used as an emotion to cover something up. For example, sadness or shame yeah. or guilt. You know, so anger is the most like she said, it's easy to be take you know, taken out on somebody else than on yourself. And no, I'm very specialist on it. <laughs> no, <laughs> but yes, so I think what would help is to really understand and see what triggers you, see what, you know, but many people don't sit to do that. They don't sit to, you know, think about, okay, what was I triggered about? What made me angry? What about the situation caused me to react like that? Mm -hmm. And also, if you are a victim of, you know, being yelled at, like you said, yeah. we always need to remember that the way a person reacts is a reflection of them and not really of you. And that is something to always remember when you feel like you're attacked or you know, some you didn't do something wrong. Okay. Yes. So, but it's common sorry, sorry, but it's common to actually yes. blame yourself That's for that. True. It's mm -hmm. like you just think about it's a reflection of it's a reflection of them later. Mm -hmm. But the moment someone shouts, you're like yeah. Immediately. What did I do wrong? Do, yes. Do women blame themselves? Of course. Uh, sorry, sorry. Oh. Come on, come on. I will test my cake. <laughs> Jerry, it's like yes. you have something to say. But something I would like to say is women and men all have emotions, all have a mind, uh, all have a will. <coughs> so mm. if we have a mind, if we have a will, if we have emotions, we also have issues. And common traits. Common traits, exactly. Like blaming ourselves. Blaming ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't know any woman who can blame herself, but okay. I'm not talking about your mom or sister and future lover. Mm. Anyway, uh, so actually, the average of students uh, killing themselves mm -hmm. because of depression and anxiety mm -hmm. is very high. Yep. So, uh, it's very sad because 
even uh, international students when they move around the world, mm -hmm. they face the same problems. Yes. It's like for me, I never heard about depression at home, mm -hmm. so frequently that I heard here, and I didn't know what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, and some youth, uh, they feel some pressure from society. Mm -hmm. Sometimes from the work, mm -hmm. sometimes from the family. Because yeah. uh, as long as you get older, uh, you will have goals to achieve. Yep. Professional goals, uh, relationship goals, because yeah. most of the women they dream to, <laughs> to get married, like Cinderella and all those things. Of course. Yeah, but for us it's the most simple thing, you know, just put the ring and and yeah, <laughs> and all right, enjoy, enjoy the marriage. Yeah, so you believe that those are factors uh, that also are increasing the number of uh, mental many youth who are uh, unhealthy mentally. Mm -hmm. All those pressure are contributing for it. Yeah, I'd like to believe that. You know, with us, the youth. <laughs> the youth. Yeah, mostly. And like, because I'm, I'm youth myself. So, huh? I also. <laughs> I'm youth, so I'd like to include myself as well. Yeah. We have like, I'd like to call it now, plan B, unrealistic uh, expectations. You know, I'm reminded of the time in primary school when I was like 10. I used to dream that by now, in my age, I would like have a car, a house. When was it? It was right? <laughs> no, maybe a husband, beautiful kids traveling the world. You know, all those fantasies, you know, they lead to those unrealistic expectations that yeah. now that I'm in, like, the youth, I'm in this age, I'm like going through the most, I'm going through a lot. There's this, there's that. I didn't think I, at my age I'll still be in school. I thought I'd be rich traveling <laughs> to Europe, <laughs> going to Europe. That's yeah. nice. So yeah, we do have like unrealistic expectations sometimes. Like mm -hmm. most of the time we do. We yes. get into reali relationships with the idea that everything is going to be <coughs> good. And when the road turns rough, we, yeah. things get complicated, we get confused, we get angry, depressed, stressed, and we don't know how to deal with it. We start engaging in behaviors that are like, not good and some people cannot even take it yeah. to the point that they commit suicide like i mean suicide is not like it's something that you like ask for you just cannot handle the pleasure that comes yes. with all the events in your life mm -hmm. and then you're like you know what let me just take the easy way out yes. well we'd like to begin we'd like to assume as people because mm -hmm. we don't know what really goes on when you are uh, at that age of committing suicide, but yeah, it has to do with how we perceive things, how we see things, what we expect as people. Yes. yes, and so I think to add to that, there is also, like she mentioned, unrealistic expectations on yourself, but yeah. also expectations that your society puts on you, your family puts on you, your the education system puts on you, like you were talking about, right? Yeah. So those expectations, I think, um, are what cause people you know to really come to a place where they can't handle it anymore and what really helps is i believe expectations should be dynamic like you keep yeah. changing and have lots of grace on yourself right mm -hmm. okay this is how much i can handle and this is what i can do but it takes a level of awareness to come mm -hmm. to that place and say okay this is enough maybe i need to take a step back maybe i need to take um, some rest maybe i need to relook at my expectations and maybe change them up a bit. So um, I believe just having that awareness of where are your expectations are coming from. Is it yourself? Are they unrealistic? Is it from parents? Is it from society? So I think really being aware of um, these expectations can help uh, to not get to that point where you can't take it anymore. Okay. Yeah, and well, it's not just really that expectations of yes. yourself it's expectations of others as mm -hmm. well others. you know 
I'm having this kind of uh, relationship with my friends, you know. Mm. I expect them to give. She's single. She's single. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. yeah, I expect them to give me like uh, more things in order for me to like put them on that on that pedestal. That yeah, we're having fun. Our relationship is good. And when things are not like smooth, you know, I'm like ah, I'm alone now. I'm a loner because mm-hmm. I expect them to give me that level of a satisfaction of happiness mm-hmm. that I can't give to myself, you know. You are having a, a relationship with your girlfriend, Jerry. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, what you expect is like happiness. She should make me happy. Yeah. She should make me do that. But I, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's what you expect of others, really, without understanding that. You know, we are just all in this road of... Well, this time, after I, I understood that people are totally different, so I prefer to not expect nothing from you. And, and you are the only person. Yeah, and uh, giving, uh, giving more of me. Because if I expect, I will get disappointed. Always. Because Always. Women, women are unpredictable. No. Yeah. Women are unpredictable. But I want to get to this subject yeah. because mental issues is leading us to this subject. It is always about women, but not on this forum. <laughs> Maybe yeah. in, a, in another, another one. So, guys, as I was saying, uh, if you want to have the best coffee in Andhra Pradesh, Vishakapatnam, Bean Board, China Walter. Don't forget the address Bean Board, China Walter. Are you guys enjoying your cake, your yes. coffee latte? And your green tea. Yes. <laughs> yeah, green tea. How is the cake? Uh, the cinnamon roll is amazing. Shit. This oh. this is what I get all the time. Whenever I come here, this is my go-to. So. So guys, do you like this? Hopefully, come here and enjoy and have some fun. As you friends. can see. Yeah. <laughs> can't stop taking. So, we are talking about mental healthy. So, how to be healthy mentally? Mm-hmm. That we need to go to the gym, do many exercises also, mm-hmm. eat only veg food, non veg yeah. no. What are the secrets to have a mental health care? Um, I mentioned earlier that mental health is a state of a balanced physical, mm-hmm. mental, mm-hmm. emotional, and well, other. Not to bad thing. what you wrote there. No, Everyone is saying here. Uh, no, of course, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm a researcher, so I prepare well before, ha, you know. She I prepared. Do, I prepared. I prepared <laughs> myself. Blaming the men. Keep on. Yeah, so, of course, the secret is to just enjoy doing things that have meaning into your life. Because, you know, like, we just balance things, but we forget that we have a life. Mm-hmm. Balancing things doesn't mean that... I have to balance the things that, because we people we tend to like usually want the things that we lack. That's those are the things that define our happiness, you know. Because right now maybe let's say I'm single, I lack a relationship. So for me to be happy, I aspire or I look forward to have a relationship. But what about balancing my singleness now? You know, just because I am, uh, I'm still in school right now. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'll be balanced when I have a job, you know. What about balancing the school that I have now, you know? So it's like the secret is to just balance what you have, you know, find meaning in it and do it purposefully so that you can be happy. He talked about gym. I just recently started gym. And yeah, she started. <laughs> she started. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, you know, I am sometimes, I do. Start gym sometimes and like along the way I just but you know right now I'm motivated. Yeah. <laughs> I'm motivated, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I'm looking forward to the results because I I really feel like yeah by the time I I I, I, I get fit, you know, that would be like everything for me. But what, what about now what I have now, the strength that I have, I should balance that. It should motivate me to reach into that level of fitness, like in every aspect, you know, and not think about results in two weeks. And then when I don't see them, I'm like, ah, this gym thing is not working. Let me go to pain for and get some. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's basically balancing your life in a meaningful way with things that make 
meaning to your life and not just focusing on things that are that you wish to have you know you have a bike you find like you 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 really feel like you get meaning when you have a car no dive in with that bike you know drive around go around go around the studio yeah just do it yeah just do it what yeah. about you <laughs> yes i think uh for me one of the especially in this day and age where things are always in you know you're always in a hurry you're always doing the next thing going to be somewhere like there's always something one thing after another and i feel that um rest is something that many people ignore and uh by rest i don't mean sleeping i don't mean like um yeah just sleeping or napping all day but rest looks different for each person for example what reading is rest for me but for somebody else uh hanging out with friends and drinking coffee is rest right so i believe uh to have a good balance yeah. you also need to learn when to stop and when to do the things that actually matter and rejuvenate you and for that you need to find out what it is that you like um that really recharges you and makes you ready for the next thing so i think it's really knowing also when to stop and when to pause so yeah. it's very interesting when you guys say that you have you need to have a balance on it so mm -hmm. my, my question, question is uh, for those people who are perfectionist <laughs> they are mentally healthy on part or unhealthy and for those people who are competitive they are mentally healthy or unhealthy um uh, well i i believe that i tend to have perfectionist um you know and perfectionist <laughs> attitude sometimes <laughs> so it is very very exhausting to uh -huh. be honest to you know want everything to be perfect to um you know have things a certain way but um like i believe like once you know that i don't maybe if it's too much then it can be a mental issue but once you're aware i think awareness is the key You know, you know, professionalism doesn't do too much. Well, I'm trying to. So I can say personally that I am trying to yeah. notice certain behaviors, you know, like yeah. knowing okay, maybe I need to give myself more grace, give myself more time that it's, you know, it's okay to not be so perfect all the time because it is very exhausting, exhausting. to be a perfectionist. True. Well, and you? Uh I also believe that people well, according to our debate I could notice that you are very competitive. Wow, how yeah. did you know so that? You are short. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm joking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, um people were <laughs> Yeah, yeah. People who are like that. Uh-huh. Perfectionist, competitive, they tend to like do things with the idea that i have to do things right or else mm -hmm. i'll be negative to criticize myself and they are more susceptible to being depressed to being stressed when they don't achieve the desired result you know mm -hmm. so people like that i think they should just find a way not to overthink things yeah. you know they should just be flexible you know as much as it is hard because as people who have different personality traits you know mm -hmm. as a person who's competitive like you said like i know you? that <laughs> yeah, yeah like me mm -hmm. yes i know that when i don't win yeah when i don't win that i suffer you know but sometimes i should just tell myself that you can't always win and just find a way around towards being stable Again, yes. Women speaking like you can always win, like it's true. <laughs> Don't you guys are always winning? Yes. Are we? Do you think we are winning? It depends on the situation, but what what do you mean by winning? <laughs> what do you mean? Yes. What do you mean? But I Women are always winning in a discussion, in a debate, in um, anything. When it's comparing to men and women, you guys are always winning. <laughs> No. My no. life. Give me you an example are. when you lose with your man. I can't really remember. <laughs> of course, now I can't remember. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. It's between us. No, it's between us. 
in our debates huh. is the fact that you don't have anything to justify <laughs> anything. Yes. You just say it's because I'm a man. It's no. because you know that men are just men. No. We have, we have to have even, that. even when I justify it. You're saying, <laughs> but it's my argument. But mm-hmm. whatever, you win, guys. So, what you get advice for my young fellows or for those who are watching this podcast on this time? Mm-hmm. Uh, what are their advice to overcome their uh, mental health issues yeah. and how to be mentally balanced, as you say? Yes, I think uh, one thing that most of us tend to forget is. Um, admitting that you need help is I think the biggest sign of strength and many people find it very hard to admit that they are weak and you know something is wrong like nobody wants to say hey I'm going through something because it is a sign of weakness but I do want to encourage each one of you guys watching like it is a sign of huge strength if you can actually admit to yourself and to other people that you are going through something and get help because when you do admit it to yourself, when you have that realization that you have a problem, that is when you can find a solution to it, right? When right. you don't know that you, you have a problem or you're going through something and you keep denying it, that, that is when it becomes more dangerous. So always remember, asking for help is the biggest sign of strength. Wow. Yes. I'm proud of you. Good job. When I grow up, I want to be like you. <laughs> um, I also believe that people should just find courage in this life, guys, because life yeah. is difficult. And you might think that some people are having it better, which is like not true. People are just, they develop the courage to face whatever they are having you know be flexible as well that's what i've learned you know in life because i am sometimes almost bit of tight but now I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah i can be i can uh-huh. be uptight sometimes uh-huh. but i'm learning slowly that flexibility sometimes it helps you because mm-hmm. you can like challenge yourself yeah. to to do things that you didn't think, ah, I'm gonna do this. Just find your your niche. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd like to make an example of a shoe. Mm-hmm. Jer, what size do you wear? <laughs> Eleven. Exactly. And I wear size. size. Three yes, men. Of course. Three you're men. Man. You're not a woman in size. <laughs> no. And I wear a size four. Yeah, yeah, tell the truth. You are in the camera. Of course. Two and a half. <laughs> imagine, imagine. I wear size four. Yeah. So imagine me taking a size in David and walking with it, taking Jerry's shoe. Jerry, please borrow me a size in David. I want to run to school right now. <laughs> of course, I won't be school. It's either it will get off, it's either it will get torn, and it's not even my shoe. So it's better when I have mine. I can walk through everything, all the adversities. If I find mud along the road, I can walk through it. If I find stones, I can stamp on them. I know that it's my shoe. It fits well. Yet with Jerry's shoe, it might get off. And obviously, I can get... It will be comfortable. (laughs) No, of course not. Of course not. So yeah, I really feel like people should just find their balance with Mm -hmm. what they have. Their shoes. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Can I add something? Yes, you can. Yes. Add everything. (laughs) Yeah. Yes, um, I would also like to add uh, and say that we are meant and made for community. We can't really do anything in isolation. Mm-hmm. So always make sure you find good community around you because I think most of the time we don't, we have these mental issues. Yes, we do have it because of people, but mm-hmm. we also have it because we don't have good people around mm-hmm. us who can support us. and. So never do anything in isolation. Always be involved in a healthy community. And um, that itself will solve a lot of problems. Yeah, Yeah, in order to meet meet good people, this is the best place. Just come here to the billboard. Child, you will find everyone here. Angolans, Ugandans, Swazilands, (laughs) Indians. My friend is Chinese. 
and <laughs> you will find all the word here. So this Beanboard Channel Walter, it has been a blessing for us, uh, Mouse Podcast. So we are at the end. Uh, I would like to thank you guys. Thank you for having here. us. Yeah, uh, I have one advice for you guys. So it is very important to check what we watch, mm -hmm. what we hear, and what we think. Because all of this thing can affect our mental health. Mm -hmm. So, and also there is a, a Bible saying, if you guys allow me to, to share it, Philippians 4, 8. Mm -hmm. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, and whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent and prize worthy, think about such a thing. So thank you guys. May God bless you. See you on the next podcast. Share this link with your family, with your friends. Subscribe in our channel and put our like. And don't forget, Billboard is the best place for you. <laughs> bye, guys. Bye. Say bye. 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 <laughs>